Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to uh, Dumb SEO Questions, episode 397. Well, I think we're getting close to our 400th uh, episode. Will, will we celebrate? Uh, of course we will. Okay. All right. Um, we'll, we'll have a coronavirus busting party. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, uh, each week uh, we we gather here to uh, respond to questions uh, asked on the Dumb SEO Questions uh, Facebook group. Uh, with us tonight we have Masataki Wasa. Masataki is webmaster of wasaweb.net. Uh, he's uh, also a Google product expert uh, in the AdSense community. Masataki resides in Wimbledon uh, in the UK. Tim Kappa is uh, CEO of OnlineOwnership.com. He's based uh, 100 miles north of Masataki um, in Corby. Um, he's also a Google product expert uh, on uh, the Google My Business community. And uh, David Rosam, a leading uh, internet marketer. Um, he's based in the sunny south of the UK, in West Sussex. Um, he's a... No, he's not a Google product expert of anything. <laughs> no, he's not. He's not anything. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> we have um, six questions tonight. Um, let's, um, see, yeah. what have we got? Another, another one from Nathan Gidai, and I, I really like it when people come along and, and take advantage uh, of, um, what is available on the, the Dumb SEO Christians Facebook group. That's exactly what it's there for, uh, exactly why we do this, um, and I, I, I like to see, uh, um, somebody like Nathan uh, um, benefiting from the work that we do. Anyway, uh, Nathan Gadai uh, said, uh, who gets to decide what is black hat versus what is white hat? Uh, he said, who here feels like a lot of SEO work is actually taking out the trash? Uh, black hat and crappy SEO work that was left behind, uh, um, oh, that was left behind is a major part of their work. My favorite client is the one with zero online presence. Well, so you've got kind of two questions in here. Who decides what black hat and white hat is? Well, search engines decide that, uh, not SEOs, because SEOs will always do different bits and bobs, but it's search engines decide essentially what they are going to not like. Um, <clears throat> um, well, and to your next bit, sort of every SEO has a different kind of opinion because there is no manual to this. There's opinion, there's testing, there's theory. So nobody is, you know, like you may not have to take out any crappy work or anything, um, do you know what I mean? You, you, you might just tidy it up and same again, if another client, another person inherited your work, they may also have a different, a different opinion. Um, do you see what I mean? It's, 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 it's varied. I see what you mean, Tim. I, I see what he means as well. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's somewhat down to our conscience as well, uh, what we're willing to do, what we're willing to, which rules we're willing to stretch. Um, personally, I'm not willing to stretch many rules, but uh, there you go. Um, and the idea of a lot of SEO work is actually taking out the trash. I, I tend to think of it as being the, the first month or so of taking over 
uh, a new client is uh, clearing out the, the rubbish uh, before getting on with the, the, the proper stuff, uh, the real SEO stuff. Um, yeah, I think that's my view. Yeah, and it depends on how much risk someone wants to take as well. I mean, if you're prepared, if you're happy to risk everything, well, you would do certain things that other people wouldn't. Okay. So, do you think we've, we've uh, covered this adequately for Nathan? Let's move on to number two on our run list. It's from Solomon uh, Hohenheim Tesla. He said, do you think a structure in a sitemap makes a difference for Google? Uh, asking in general for a site with thousands of pages. I've read this a couple of times and I ended up being confused as to what someone was asking. Um, <clears throat> does he, is he referring to sitemap.xml or is he talking about the structure of a site? Um, and I'm not sure what he's asking. Um, and also, uh, Yes, I'm, I'm not quite sure what he's asking. Um, I'm not sure that the that, that structure in sitemap.xml makes much sense uh, as, um, as, a, uh, as a concept. So, um, yes, the structure of your, uh, of your website, let's assume that he's asking, um, do you think the structure of a website makes a difference? Um, makes a difference for Google? Does that mean that? It will perform better on Google. Um, I'm assuming that's what he's saying. I'm sorry, I'm not trying to be be picky, but I'm just trying to make sure I uh, I have a good crack at answering the the question that's being asked. Um, yes, structure is is something that will help Google understand your 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 uh, your content, um, and uh, you you need to think about. Uh, how deep your pages are, if you have a structure that buries lots of content about 10 clicks away uh, from, from the home page, um, you're going to lose the traction of that content. So from that point of view, structure could uh, make quite some difference. Um, so, yes, um, I don't know. Anyone else uh, got any ideas about what this <laughs> what, what this question is about? <laughs> well, let's, let's let's put it in two ways. So, a site map. Um, you can't mm, really. Like, it depends how big the site is. You know, if the site's a hundred freaking pages, your site map's just going to be hundred URLs. Job done. Google doesn't need a structure in there. Mm -hmm. If the, it's a massive site. It is split up between products, categories, articles, guides, uh, technical specs. Those ideally should each have their own sitemap uh, with nested within the main sitemap. Uh, which makes it easy for Google to know know which are living where under what URL, you know. Um, I mean, if they direct URLs to everything, then there's no freaking point. You can just have one sitemap, but it's easy, you know, if you if you if you break them down by structure. Uh, but does that make a difference? Not necessarily. It just makes things easier for Google to segment and crawl. Um, in terms of your actual site structure, like David was saying, yeah, totally. That definitely makes a difference. And that should certainly be planned out. Yeah, well, I, I think we've covered this. Um, 
Let's have a look at the next. It's number three on our run list. It's from Nils Wine. And he said, how can I scale my link building strategy? Uh, Nils goes on to say, for example, I want to be able to do that. Each time I publish a post, um, I can have two to uh, three high quality and genuine backlinks easily. Well, you know, to my mind, um, high quality and genuine never comes easily. Anyway, um, what say you guys? See, by you automatically thinking of scaling it, you're, 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 you're kind of thinking of some automate, automation there or having uh, a structure in place that it's almost guaranteed. Now, I don't think link building can be guaranteed um, in that sense. Um, and if it is guaranteed, then you are essentially reaching out to the same people over and over and over and over and over again which in itself is going to cause a pattern, a problem, because if you're link building, I'm assuming you want them to be followed links, uh, uh, appear mm -hmm. to be natural. But if you are scaling, scaling means predictability. Predictability, predictability means it can be determined. Determined means search engines know exactly what you fucking do it. And then they're not natural links. You, do, do you see what I'm trying to say here, Nils? the whole point of staying within something that is going to benefit you is now for google obviously because we kind of just assume google google states it has to be a natural if it's not natural then it has to fit under certain parameters as in sponsored well you know a rel sponsored rel freaking paid or whatever the hell they call it now i can't remember all that's the new ones so, yeah, your scalability is going to knock out straight on what scalability is. Okay. Anybody else on this one? Yeah, I, I'm fairly sure it covers it. I also have to point out people like Michael Martinez. Uh, who uh, answer questions on the uh, uh, Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group through the week. Um, and, uh, yeah. <clears throat> All right, let's move on to the next. Ian Warner um, asks the question, should uh, links in headers and footers be set to no index um, for SEO. Uh, 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 <laughs> what do you mean by a link in a header and a footer? You mean internal links? Like, no, mate, no, 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 no. If you're setting them to, well, how can you set a link to no index? I think he means no follow. Yeah, right. yeah. Like, like, if for some reason you could set a link to a no index, you'd essentially be telling Google not to index the next page. No. So even if it's no follow, no, don't, no, 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 no. Why? No. <laughs> no. No. No such thing is a dumb question. Um, I think it's a. a a good question because so many people uh, get bound up in this um, attempt to um, sculpt their, 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 their sites. And um, of course, the page sculpting was, was a thing once, but that was a long, long time ago. Yeah, I think it's a case of overthinking something. Um, and you know, you have links in headers and footers because they're there for the user to navigate your site. So, you know, there is a reason why they're there. I think the, the other thing perhaps is, is that with Google's latest load of complications about links and labeling them, um, 
I think that's possibly where this this question has come from because Google has managed to make the uh, the linking thing more complicated for no particular reason and no particular benefit but for himself. So, uh, yeah. Okay. Well, let's um, go on. I see from the comments, um, th these are the comments uh, made on the WSCA Questions Facebook group. Uh, Richard Hearn was active there this week. As, as he is almost every week um, and sometimes joins us uh, online. Okay, let's go to the next. Another one for Nathan. Um, it's titled the Schema Markup for an FAQ page. Uh, Nathan said, how long can the Schema Markup answer for an FAQ page for a single question? Um, he said, is there a limit? I have 500 words consisting of five steps as an answer. I'm wondering if Google will figure it out. Well, firstly, I don't think there's a limit. 500 words shouldn't be a problem to, to, to be displayed as a rich snippet, as an FAQ. Uh, the big problem that I have got is that why are you providing the entire answer, which means the user will read the whole thing and not bother coming to your site. Um. No, I don't think there's a there's a limit either. Um, I guess that uh, Google will probably not show the full 500 words um, on the SERPs, but um, I don't know. I, I guess they would probably just um, just peter out, but uh, I'm not yeah. sure. Yeah, I've never I've never put that many in an FAQ page in that sense. I mean, I've had longer answers in an FAQ page. I've just never added them. I think I was looking at this. I think the longest that I've actually ever included was, I think it was just short of 400, and that displays fully. But of course, I don't want them to get the whole answer. I want them to think of it like a search result. You want to tickle them in and make them click. You don't want to provide them everything. You know, these these may look great, but you don't want to keep the, the, the user direct on, on, on the SERP and never coming through to your site. Or, you know, you, you need them in this site. Okay. All right, uh, let's move on to number six on our run list. Um, it's a question from Nathan Gadai. Um, is it crucial to have everything preloaded, uh, Nathan? So that's the title. And uh, he goes on to say, my blog page on my WordPress website has a load more button. Uh, is it crucial to have everything preloaded? Or am I better to have it paginated? Someone told me that it is important to simply keep it on the sitemap, which I tend to agree, but I just wanted your take on it. Well, let's have your take on it, guys. So, personally, I'd be, I'd be, I'd be using looking at um something like um delayed delayed loading rather than having the user to load more themselves so you <clears throat> you know your, your your dev should be looking at mm. stuff where let's say your top your, the top half of your site is there uh, you know above the fold is loaded straight away um and then whilst whilst you know they're scrolling down it 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 it, it loads um rather than having a user to freaking hit load more i mean um i 
Yeah, so if the whole page is loaded, um, but the user has to click on load more to see it, then it, that sort of is meaningless from speed performance perspective, isn't it? Yeah. So you, I suppose the question is, you know, if you have a page that is partly or partially loaded initially, and then you click on load more, that triggers more of that page to be loaded. That's a different situation. But if you're going to have everything loaded, then in a sense, what's the point of that load more button? Okay. Well, um, it looks like the next button I click will say thank you for watching. Um, but before we go, um, I just want to point out people like uh, Nathan, uh, oh, sorry, uh, Adam John Humphreys, uh, Michael Martinez, uh, Brenda Malone, uh, people who give up their time through the week uh, to make uh, Damasio question such a valuable uh, resource and um, of course you guys um, turning up and uh, uh, being with us live um, on, on our weekly recording um, David Razan, Tim Kappa, Masataki Wasa, Richard Hearn um, and of course uh, let's not forget Mike Fisher Kirshner all right, let's um, click that button and uh, make it a certainty. Yes, it is. All right, um, we'll be back uh, next week um, to do this um, all again. Um, but for now, um, it's um, good night.